So, you know, I remember meeting this guy, Big Boy Henry, and, you know, I was talking to him, like, how do you do this? You know, he's like, well, do you love it? You know, do you love it, son? I was like, yeah, I love it. He's like, well, then you'll be fine. so much for being here with us today. We are super excited to talk a little bit about you and your music and hopefully what's next for you. Um, I'm psyched yeah. to be here. So um, could you just start off by telling us just a little bit about who you are, um, just in general, 30 seconds spiel? Okay, uh, well, I'm a working musician. I live in Vermont, of all places, and I've been a working musician, paying my bills, playing guitar, and, and teaching some also, uh, and singing, you know, my band and solo gigs and things since 1993. Can you talk a little bit about your evolution as a musician over the last few years? Well, I guess I would say, you know, we talked earlier about being into blues music. Mm -hmm. And then, like, for my 20s, that's all I would listen to. I would not go to a show if it wasn't a blues show. I would not buy a record if it wasn't a blues record. I would not listen to the radio if it wasn't a blues show. You know, nothing. Like, I was totally narrow-minded about it. Because I figured, as, like, white Jewish guy growing up in the suburbs in New England, if I'm going to learn to play this music, i got to really soak it in, you know. I ended up being an English major. I loved writing, just loved kind of expressing myself different ways. And then halfway through college, uh, I got asked to join a band just because I owned an electric guitar and an amp. Not that I was any good. And uh, we started playing punk covers, and, and we'd do punk versions of Madonna tunes and swing versions of punk tunes. And it was just a really fun band called Cup O' Pizza. When I got to college, I got into Hendrix big time, and I tried to figure out how to play his stuff, but I couldn't figure it out. I mean, it was way complicated, way evolved. So I started reading about him, and he was really into blues. So I started checking out his idols, people like Sonny Boy Williamson, Muddy Waters, Helen Wolf. Ronnie Earl was like my guitar influence ever since I was 20. I saw him at a little club in Connecticut. Uh, it just really turned me on to the intensity of the blues and to what was possible. And he doesn't even sing. He's an instrumentalist, great guitar, great, great guitar player, like Santana level guitar player. And I got to meet, I met him randomly at a Stevie Wonder concert. I walked into the place, Ronnie Earl was waiting for his wife to get back from the bathroom, and we connected, and I sent him a CD and a letter thanking him for being such an inspiration to me. And then, like, you know, a few days later, I got this call. I'm gonna stand in my kitchen while my kids are playing in the backyard, and I'm making like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for them. And uh, it's like, hey, this is Ronnie. I'm like, uh, uh, I felt like, you know, someone was asking me to the prom or something, you know, like that jittery kind of thing. And he just wanted to say how much he loved the record and, you know, loved meeting me. And so we ended up, uh, I got to sing on one of his records. You can have a gig in front of, you know, a thousand people and you're in the spotlight and you may not feel as connected with the audience. And like, it's a fine gig and all. And then you've got a gig in front of five people at the end of a night in a little bar and and you're totally connected, and that's like the best gig you've had in like months. This one's called 17 Years. I remember what you said when we first met How much love one girl get That was 17 years ago, baby An age-old story everybody tells Starts out in heaven, winds up in hell Don't you, baby? Seventeen years of heartache. Seventeen years of pain. 
started out a terrific love affair. I was in love with the very idea of you being there. Yes, I was, girl. What a rude awakening I found out. Somebody else was dreaming about. Now my dream is over. Well, it took 17 years for me to find out a whole lot of things I know nothing about. Oh, girl, that's the truth. Any advice for an aspiring blues artist? Yeah, uh, I would say the advice that was given to me. You know, if you love it, just do it. You know, and and stick with it. You know, uh, like you guys are all young, but like I'm 52, and like only in the last like five to ten years has my career really started to generate that. It's what is it? What do they call it? The algorithmic? Not mm, al slope. That slope. Uh, what is it? It's, you guys are any exponential. Thank you. <laughs> Things have grown exponentially in the last five years because there's something about persistence. And my grandfather called it stick to itiveness. You know, if you stick with something a really long time, I mean, you have to love it to be able to do that and, and make it weather through all the various little ups and downs and storms and whatnot. But if you can stick with it, it really starts paying dividends. And, you know, you see the you see the real rewards later sometimes. 